Around the time I was writing Fortune's Fancy, my webcomic, I had a med change that messed me up. I went 46 hours without a wink of sleep and thought I was Elvis. No, I don't know why Elvis. But the next several months were very difficult. I wasn't myself. I was lost. After having the bipolar diagnosis for 10 years, I felt like I knew the ins and out, but this left me limping through life. And this little comic gave me some stability. Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Unkempt Snuggle Pepper, and I've been working on Fortune's Fancy for about two and a half years now. Playing is the process of me adding colors, shadows, and background from part four of chapter nine. It started as a novel, but no one seemed interested in reading it. Honestly, I didn't have much of a following on Facebook, so it's not surprising. But the idea of the story and characters meant so much to me, I wanted to share it with someone else. When someone asked if there was a webcomic version available, I decided I would give it a try. I didn't do any prep work because I really didn't expect to stick with it very long. As it turns out, I'm still making the webcomic and still in love with the characters and the story. Whether you are starting a comic because you think it's a great idea or art is your coping skill, there's a lot to learn. In this video, I hope to offer you nine tips to help whether you're starting at page one or 100. Some of these tips I've seen in other videos, so I'm going to try to expand on the idea or offer alternatives. So without further ado, let's get into it. Tip number one, learn and use the tools in your medium. I currently work in Clip Studio EX. It gives me a lot of tools and the ability to make frames, speech bubbles, a vector line art tool, and the ability to save lots of presets. But I didn't know some of these features until I made so many pages into my comic. For example, I would save each page as a Clip Studio file, then save it as a full-size PNG to get clips from, then a smaller PNG for uploading to Tapas and Webtoons. Then I discovered the batch export tool. Rather than saving each page individually three times, I could save five pages straight to PNG and then save the same five pages again as a smaller PNG with the option to resize, then save. This shaved down a lot of time and excessive steps. It's helpful to learn the tools available to you. A lot of artists tend to shy away from some of the tools in digital art because it feels like cheating. But taking advantage of oil paint, slow drying time, or watercolors transparency isn't cheating. Those are tools of the trade. I highly recommend making comics digitally, especially since personally, I tend to draw a lot of hands. Nothing is worse in traditional mediums than drawing a hand perfectly and then it end up being too big or too small. Well, perhaps painting an hour on the wrong layer. Digital art has the ability to be easy to pick up. When I started around 2004, there were a few tutorials on DeviantArt. And when YouTube started, I was still on dial-up. Anyone remember when YouTube only allowed videos under 10 minutes? It's pretty easy to find the brush and eraser tool and have fun. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the more you get into comics, the more you will want to save time. Tools like Mask, Layer, Magic Wand can save time and headache. I always justify to myself that taking the time to learn the trick or tool makes up for the time I'm going to save when creating my comic. Tip number two, name your layers and other file management tips. When I went back to redraw part of chapter one and part of chapter two, I found it hard to figure out which layer did what without turning it on and off. This doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you're trying to change 20 or 30 pages, those little clicks tend to add up. At some point, maybe Fortune's Fancy will be published, and I'll have to go back and clean stuff up. In which case, I want to be able to navigate the layers without having to constantly toggle them on and off. In conjunction with organizing your layers, so it's easy to know what is on which layer, I think it's important to have a good file management system set up. Personally, I have a folder that contains all of my artwork, and within that folder is Fortune's Fancy. And then within that folder 
are the folders for each chapter. Because I use the batch export on my files, they're already numbered by the page number. I name my full size chapter nine, and then my resized R chapter nine. Because R is further down in the alphabet, all of my most current pages are at the bottom of the folder for when I go to upload. I also have a file entitled hashtag shit I'm tired of drawing. The octothorpe or hashtag at the beginning or any symbol really will move it to the very top of the folder so whenever I open Fortune's Fancy it's right there at the top. This is the document that contains various backgrounds and things I didn't want to draw over and over again. Tip number three. Plan ahead. There are two types of writers, planners and pantsters. Pan planners, as the name implies, plan out the plot. Pantsters fly by the seam of their pants, hence the name. I think this is more of a spectrum than a binary. There are quite a range of people from plotters who enjoy writing down every minuscule detail of the plot before beginning to tell the story, to people who make successful web comics flying by the seat of their pants week after week. The main idea for having some form of a plot written down is to avoid the mad panic when you have another episode that is due in a few days and you have no idea what happens next. Personally, I recommend writing down the major plot points and have a clear idea of what your character is going to struggle with and overcome throughout the course of the story. When I started Fortune's Fancy as a webcomic, I think I had around 30,000 words written out in the novel form. Obviously, if you're using screenwriting, you're going to have a much lower word count. But I had about five chapters planned out, and each chapter contains three to six episodes. So it's pretty solid plot for at least my first year. A bonus to having a solid idea of where the plot is going is to be able to foreshadow future events or to plant Easter eggs. For example, Drexel eventually calls Mira Little Bird. So in the first few chapters, whenever Mira would talk about freedom, a bird appeared behind her as a nod to her future nickname. Tip number four, use references. There's some advice that floats around on the internet about not using references with drawing. This is just BS. I do draw most of my webcomic from my head, but there are a few things I still have to use reference on, such as unusual angles, hands, architecture. A lot of my references are of myself, but I also use Pinterest. Reference doesn't just apply to drawing from real life. It applies to other comics as well. For example, in real life, I can shake my head. But how do I portray that in a still image? How do I show an eyebrow wiggle? How do I express a very subtle or nuanced emotion change? These are problems that artists face, and rather than reinventing the wheel, we can look at a variety of other artists and how they choose to fix their problems. In many of my critique videos, I talk about doing master studies, where you copy another artist's work for the intention of learning how they use creative problem solving. If you choose to do a master study from another comic, don't post unless you have the artist's permission, and if you are, be sure to credit the artist. Tip number five, don't info dump. I'm sure you hear this one a lot. Don't spend pages of heavy text in order to set the scene. Most readers aren't going to want to sit down and read all of that dense information. So how do you deliver it? One option happens a lot in fantasy and sci-fi, and that is to have the reader discover the new world with their protagonist. Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, The Wheel of Time all do this. They provide just enough information at the beginning to set the scene the protagonist lives in. As the story begins to up the ante, then the protagonist has to follow the other person through the world, learning about parts of the world they never knew before. Another option is to go straight into an action scene. Give your readers questions to ask. Why are they fighting? What is that blue light? Why is the character wearing a mask? Naturally, you don't have to answer all of those questions. The issue with info dumping is that it answers too many questions about the world and too little about the characters. And what makes a good story is to follow a character as they change and react to certain events. 
Tip number six, don't draw just for money. Most web comics won't make any money. Those that do on platforms like Tapas or Webtoons make very little. If your webcomic is popular enough, you can offer early access, merch, or behind the scenes to supplement your income. But very rarely can you make a living on a webcomic or webcomic related art alone. I personally recommend not partnering with a writer in exchange for possible profits. This just means you won't get paid. I would only accept this offer under one of two conditions. First, the writer has his First, the writer has substantial evidence of paid work. Second, if I really love the idea and with no expectations of monetary compensation. I think making a webcomic is a lot of fun and I don't get paid for it, but it's also very time consuming. The entire process for this episode took about 10 hours. Tip number seven, do the prep work. So you have a great story, some characters, and you're just itching to draw that first panel but there's so much that needs to be ironed out beforehand. You might be saying, well, I made a character sheet and designed their clothing. That is a great start. However, are you able to draw them consistently over and over? Do you know what sort of expressions they have in different situations? Have you decided what the background will look like? I recommend drawing a few expression sheets to get better feel for your characters. If there's something you absolutely hate drawing, it's best to cut it out or redesign it now. Or perhaps you have a lot of details in every panel and it takes a long, tedious time to do all the ink work. I admire artists who have a painterly style or detailed images in every frame, but to replicate that over and over will become very tiring. Of course, your style will change over time. There's a big difference between when I started Fortune's Fancy and present day. Because of this, I redid chapter one and fixed a few errors in chapter two. This brings me to my next point. Tip number eight, go forward. If you redraw all previous pages every few months so that you have a consistent style, you won't make much progress in the story. Hopefully the prep work will streamline your characters so that you can draw them as close to the same each time. Since web, since web comics consume a large amount of time, it may take years to tell all of your story. I find it enjoyable to watch how little changes happen over the course of the comic. It's to be expected. Think of Disney's The Lion King, the animated one. The sclera of the eye changes between yellow and white throughout the movie, but changing the eye color would be very time intensive, especially in the 90s. Despite this changing detail, it's still a very popular movie. Let me know down in the comments if you notice that change. Tip number nine, just start. I intend on making more videos on tools I have found helpful while creating a webcomic. This will join many other videos on how to create a webtoon or time-saving tips. And you could watch hundreds of videos on related topics, but the best way to learn is to start doing. So many of the things that I have found to be helpful in making a webcomic, I either found myself or searched for something very specific. Watching videos is great, but some of the knowledge and wisdom only come from practice. Well, that went by faster than planned, so here's a bonus tip. Before I mentioned in tip number two, hashtag shit, I'm tired of drawing, this document is very time saving. I sat down one day and drew a quick sketch of Drexel for size, and then went in and created the four walls of his house. Anytime I use a background for more than a few panels, I create it in this document as a separate layer. Even though my backgrounds are fairly simple and easy to recreate, I spent a lot of time creating it over and over. This way, I copy the layer and paste it into my current comic page. I then use the wand tool to select the panel and erase everything outside of the selection. I then merge all of the background layers into one and give it a little bit of a Gaussian blur. So, those are my 10 tips for making webcomics. I hope you found this video helpful. 
And if you did, be sure to give a like down below. If sad gay wizards are your jam, then I have a link to Fortune's Fancy down in the doobly doo. My word of the year is explore, and right now I'm exploring different YouTube ideas on my channel. You will find critiques of art that I have found in the subreddit ArtCrit. I have also working on long form videos where I talk about art and mental health. I'm considering adding some tutorials at some point about common tools I use when creating in Clip Studio Paint. So if that sounds something you're interested in, please let me know in the comments down below. 